Admiral's Log, November 10th, 1930. The war with the Italians is going extremely well. Our ships are so vastly better than theirs that I don't see them lasting longer than three months for this war. Their battleships are being sunk by our heavy cruisers. Their battle cruisers are being ridiculed by our light cruisers and destroyers. The introduction of radar aboard our ships has given us another major advantage. We can now easily detect and engage the Italian warships before they can even see us. To our knowledge, no other nation has access to radar. We have labeled this technology as top secret to maintain our advantage. While the war with the Italians is going well, I'm already thinking ahead to what we need to go for next. Britain is slowly recovering. They're not a threat at the moment as they seem very eager to cozy up to us. It seems that for now they've learned their lesson and know their place. It's the Austro-Hungarian Empire that has me concerned. With the destruction of the French Empire and us claiming the British territories in the Mediterranean, two major powers are no longer keeping the Austro-Hungarians in check. The Austro-Hungarians also did extremely well in their previous war with the Italians. I suspect they'll be looking for an opportunity to finish the job. Let's say that the Italian Empire collapses entirely. That means the Austro-Hungarians can take over the entire Mediterranean. We can contain them through our position at Gibraltar, but they have a lot of ships and might just force their way out. I foresee a conflict with the Austro-Hungarian Empire in the near future. If the British, French and Italians cannot keep them in check, we'll just have to do it ourselves. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 23 of the Big Guns Campaign. It's November 1930 and we once again find ourselves at war with the Italians. I have a relatively small task force here of the battleships Scharnhorst and König Wilhelm. This is a battle cruiser of the Mars class which has been heavily revised. Scharnhorst, similarly relatively new, Pommern 1928 class. And we have the Prince Adalbert of the Saxony, this is by far the oldest ship. Light cruiser Ariadne and destroyer V-18. Against the Andrea Doria, which has already been softened up somewhat. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Atora Fira Mosca. A couple of heavy cruisers. The heavy... No. The light cruiser Bari is something I would like dead. It's not as dangerous as the other heavy cru sorry, light cruiser classes. But they're still no joke. That's a lot of torpedo tubes. And then these destroyers also present a big torpedo hazard to my ships. Fortunately, as opposed to the previous battle, now I believe most, at least the battleships, most of my ships have radar. And with that, I should be able to swiftly spot the enemy. Scharnhorst is equipped with Generation 1 radar. And she also has received the upgrade of the Gear Turbines 2. We have the König Wilhelm over there who has received her new turrets. She also received a new radar system and gear turbines as well. She can do 33, she can do 28. You're going to join this div. Uh, light cruiser... Wait, no, 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 no. no, Not like this. I want the Scharnhorst. I want the König Wilhelm following the Scharnhorst like that. And I want the V18 to spot. This is also a new destroyer. She is packing... 12 5.9 inch guns, supremely capable of dealing damage with semi armor piercing shells against light targets, and if the target proves to be a little bit more resilient, we can use a high explosive. And a lot of it. These are pretty big DDs at 2200 tons. And then there's the Ariadne, light cruiser, uh, could be useful in screening against the enemy, they also have radar. They're pretty fast. They were designed to intercept destroyers. They have Hydro 3, so they'll be able to see torpedoes coming. The only thing that's keeping these cruisers back somewhat is their turret rotation speed, which in a previous episode proved to be a bit of a problem. Because we weren't really that capable of uh, getting the turrets to turn towards the target fast enough. Now, König Wilhelm engages. 
Uh, she can... Oh, she's the battle cruiser. Okay. I thought I had these guys in reverse, but whatever. This is the one with 15-inch guns. I had to downsize the guns on the Koenig Wilhelm because they received the new turrets, the Mark III? Yeah. And they were a different turret design, meaning that they could no longer sport 15.9-inch guns, but that's fine. Scharnhorst also got her new guns. These are 16.9 Mark III's, capable of reaching the enemy, if I can spot them that far, at 46 kilometers. Although, of course, at that range, they're not that likely to be actually able to hit the target. Also, Scharnhorst, being a relatively newer ship, only has a trained crew. And having my tr my crew or my ship's mothballed probably didn't help their uh, training regimen that much. So their accuracy is not going to be that great. Oh, look. Oh, look. The destroyers are here. 18, I need you to start eliminating those DDs. Ariadne, I need you to start screening against the enemy DDs. This is where all of those 3.9-inch guns should be coming in very usefully. Maintaining pressure on the battleship. Oh, we got a hit. Main deck, partial pen on the battleship. Here is their light cruiser group, and then this... is their heavy cruiser group. Yeah. Interesting that we're firing HE at them, because at this range we can pl probably plunge right through their deck armor. And with the radar system, you just so much more capable of spotting them than they are capable of spotting you. That's the DD. Ariadne opening up. 18 opening up. Oh shit, I forgot about my heavy cruiser. Hello. Move. Shit. It's a very old cruiser, this one. I have upgraded them a bit, yet not enough. Not enough. Holy shit, what did you hit? Looks like a light cruiser got in the way of a high explosive, no, armor piercing shell. On the way to the battleship. And they're paying for it. Because this is a dead light cruiser. Oh, come on, you cannot flood like that and stop at the last bit. Is that how it's going to go down? No, because it's not going down. Okay, fine. Can you guys see me? I'm not so sure they can. Oh. The torpedo range is only 6-3. At least with these guys. 9-5 with these. Ooh, very, very nice. That was a flooding hit. Right now, just using volume of fire against the DD here. And... Have they seen me? Yes, they finally spotted the battle cruiser. It's, that's the only thing that they're spotting? No, they also spotted Scharnhorst. But they haven't spotted the smaller ships yet. Perfect. This battleship is pretty much done for. Very good. Come on, eliminate the battleship, please. Thank you. That ought to do it. Unless those compartments were already flooded. Holy crap, the accuracy on these guns. 16%, 23% for the battle cruiser. Yeah, this poor guy is listing to port quite badly. And is not likely to be surviving for very much longer. Destroyed funnel. It's not a CL though. That's a DD. Battleship is down. Switch to high explosive now, because AP is going to be vastly overpowered against what we're shooting at. Uh, this, by the way, on Scharnhorst is the 
base, no, standard AP shells. The König Wilhelm, the battleship, no, battle cruiser, sorry, firing semi armor piercing. 2300 damage from the Scharnhor from the König Wilhelm and 7k from the Scharnhorst. Destroyer Ardente is going down. Persaglieri is down. Giovanni Acerbi. The Italians seem to be in disarray. You're done. Ariadne having done 2,500 damage. Respectful. 3.5k for the V18? What the hell? I mean, you got 12 5.9 inch guns. I should have expected that, but... These ships impress me. As did their predecessors, which only had 5 5.9 inch guns. So if you put on more than double the firepower, yes, you're going to get some excellent results. Hello, body. No, I know I could have targeted the body and gone 100% chance to hit on the Acerbi, but it doesn't matter. They're gone anyway. Ariadne with a semi armor piercing. Oh, taking some shots at the body. Just leaves a bunch of heavy cruisers. This is going to be a slaughter. I'm not even sure if I'm going to take one inch of damage, one single point. Prince Adelbert. Nice of you to join. Do we need high explosive against this? This armor piercing work? What? What sort of a tank are you? 11 inch main belt. 9.1 inch four belt? 7 inches of superstructure? You bet your ass this is a tank. Holy shit, that thing has firepower. Sorry, armor, not firepower. Firepower is okay. Not great. What the shit? Can the battlecruiser even pen that? Should be able to. Yeah, they can definitely pen that. Adelbert's taking some damage. San Giovanni flooding. Ariadne. Should micro these ships better. They're all a bit too far away from the enemy. 5.9k damage on the DD? Price, 46 million. Price, 9 million. Holy. Urania just took a big hit, didn't it? Yeah, 1,000 damage. So, it's the König Wilhelm with her 15.9 inch guns that are currently working over these cruisers. Because the semi-armor piercing has enough pen, plus less chance to ricochet. Because it's semi-armor piercing. And they're what, light shells? No, standard shell size. I hope you guys aren't getting bored with these uh, videos that are turning into a bit of a seal clubbing of the AI. Because, I mean, this battle, I've done 76,000. I've taken zero hits. They have been in a position where they could actually do damage to me. They could shoot me. Just that they haven't hit me because the entire crew level is cadet. So... Yeah, I think I'm going to have all of my ships come out of this battle without any damage, meaning that they're going to maintain their position, and I don't have to get them all the way back. I don't have to get them all the way back from Germany. Ettore Fira Mosca. Yeah, I think I'm going to let you guys leave. Optimistic. Oh, they've done a point of damage! Shit. Ooh, that blew up nicely. Torpedo launchers on the Bartolomeo Celioni. Sorry, Colioni. Going up. Ariadne was able to explode them on the deck. Nine points of damage. Damn it. At least they haven't damaged the battleship. So the battleship should be able to maintain her position. 
Where's the DD at? Oh, well, you're still joining the fight against the light cruiser. Which is proving to be fairly resilient against all of this attention. Interestingly. Anyway, let me know down below in the comments if this is too much seal clubbing. Although, I'm, <laughs> I'm not really in a position to do much about it. It's not like I can force these battles like you saw in the previous episode where we had the heavy cruisers... Oof. Where we had the heavy cruisers engage the battle cruisers and battleships and essentially win. Up until the point where they got one lucky hit in. Also, if you are enjoying these videos and would like to support my channel, I'd be very grateful if you subscribe. And I'd be even more grateful if you support my program or my uh, channel through the Patreon program. Linked down below. Let's see. Can you even see me? No. Yes, they can. They can see the battlecruiser. Yeah, parking behind the sinking Etora, Etore is not really going to win you any favors. Step cruiser, what are you doing? No, it's not a step cruiser, it's more like a sister ship. Which doesn't necessarily make it better. I'll stop talking. <laughs> done. Nice. Very nice. Damage taken, 11. Damage done, 114,000. Yikes. Oof. <laughs> this is like giving somebody a participation award. Giving them one victory point. Holy crap. Welcome to the modern German Navy against the outdated and untrained Italian Navy. Look at that. Oh, I still have two battleships. Oh, right. I got the core forest here. Let's go. Places to be. Ships to see. And... What else have we got? I got the Worth. Link up. Okay. Well, that was amusing. Why, however, is my victory point score continuing with the previous war? This is weird. This is really weird. My victory point score here, 111, sorry, 11,000 versus 444. Just, wow. Okay, move on. More meetings. Ah, yes. Fritjof. 17.9 inch guns against the Regina Elena and the Galatea. Also present, battleships Preussen, Pommern, battlecruisers Friedrich der Große and Sachsen, as well as a whole slew of heavy cruisers, light cruisers and destroyers. I think the destroyers alone could eat these things up. But of course, of course we're going to see the Fritjof fire. It's the first time we can battle test these ships. First time. And I, for one, am eager to see these in action. There she is. Hello, beautiful. Reload. 196 seconds. I can still push that down as the crew gains more experience. So I might be able to get it down to a little under 3 minutes. I can shoot out to 35 kilometers, which actually isn't as far as I would expect. I'm firing light semi or piercing shells, that explains it. Uh, they're to the southwest. You got radar? No, you don't. Oh, you're one of the older DDs. Fine. One of these has to have radar, like the 16. No? The 17, then. Yes. Okay. Ignore all collisions and just go right at the enemy so that our battleships can spot them. Set speed to... Oh, what? There we go, 27 clicks out. Fritjof. Not shooting yet? What? Oh, they're out of weapons. No, they're not out of weapons range. Fritjof. Yes. 
Look at the angle on these guns. Holy crap. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be glorious. This is going to be glorious. You may fire when ready. Hold on, it was the Berlin that spotted it. 2% chance to hit with the Preussen. Uh, all these mothballed ships have had a bit of a penalty to the crew training. Yeah. Come on, Fritjof. Fire. Fire. Let's see the level of destruction that these shells can cause. Fire! What is your problem? They have zero... Bullshit. There we go. Fritjof just fired. Those shells were Fritjofs. So now we're going to sit here for the next three minutes and change reloading. 3.5% chance to hit. If this hits with HE, it has the potential to do 2,800 damage. Preussen can do 1,400, which is half. And Pomeran can do 1,600, which is a little over half. I just don't really expect the first salvo to actually be a hit. Yeah. Not terrible. Hmm. Battle cruiser hit him. CLs, turn please. Oh. Are we being detected? Hardly. No, we're not being detected. Okay, the CLs can fire, but Pomer and Preussen need to go silent for a bit. I just want to see what the Fritjof can do. Oh shit, there's two more. Sorry. Silence. Eleven inch cruisers. Some hits. I think our accuracy is still going to be fairly terrible. Yeah, still 3% or something. It won't be great. It'll be enough. Get the lucky hit, but not much else than that. Don't get too close. I'm going to escape from this battle without taking a loss. Headphone users, be advised. This could get loud. Fire. There it is. 1.9% chance to hit. <sighs> Looks like nothing to me. Royson and Pomeran have far better chance to hit. Why? Grinson's rangefinder? Is it just because you got like Mark 3s? Probably. I got the Quinson's rangefinder. You got a stereo rangefinder, right? Yeah. Stereo focuses much, much more on long range firepower. So I would expect that they actually have a benefit right now, but it doesn't seem like it. All right, all ships ready to fire. Pitch off. Might need some work. CLs, flank, DDs, annoy. Heavy cruisers, do what you do best. Friedrich opening up. We're taking fire. Smoke up the DDs. Ooh, we are taking fire. Quite a bit. It's unacceptable. 16, I need you to disengage from this fight. I uh, would like you to survive.
Mustn't get too overzealous in trying to eliminate these ships. Has Fritjof done any damage? No. Nothing yet. I'm considering refitting these ships to have the Quinson's Rangefinder. But look at the difference. Same crew training. 26% chance to hit. With the Fritjof, it's 3.8. Pitch and roll is fine. Longitudinal weight offset is fine. So you got a radar. Hmm. Oh, by the way, I have this, the Mark II 17.9ers, which will probably get me better reload and potentially better accuracy. So yeah, I'm going to have to refit these guys, because right now they're kind of underwhelming. This guy has a torpedo detonation. Surprisingly, they're not actually getting penned as much as I would expect. It's mostly partial pens. Oh. Hey, Holy moly, how aggressive are you? Smoke. Battle cruisers. Set to HE. Battleships, set to HE. Because we can't pen this guy very well. They probably have a ton of armor. Not as much armor as their heavy cruiser did. But it's still respectable. Regina, Elena, taking a lot of fire. Taking 27% of crew losses. That's a 96 million ship. And this is a 37. These battle cruisers are relatively cheap. some outdated tech. What are you shooting? Oh god, the heavy crews are pushing in. I'm so focused on the battle with the Fritjof and trying to show that off that I'm... Ooh. Oh. Okay, yeah, that would do it. That I'm not really paying too much attention to the heavy cruisers. So that was the battleship. Let's see how quickly we can sink the Galatea. Potentially by flooding her out. Although... Standard bulkheads... And the amount of HE that you're about to take, of all various calibers, is going to be fairly deadly. Fritjof has done damage. With the 17.9s, no less. Main deck partial pen for 236 damage. Meh. Yeah, this guy is done for. No escape. They have done 1k in damage. Ooh. I know I'm mismanaging the CLs, by the way. They're... Oh. Uh, the CLs are too far away from the battle. This was mostly a firing test of the Fritjof. And everybody else were just stand-ins. There you go, structural damage. That was 5,500 damage from a 16-inch gun from the Preussen. Well done. Dealt with. Okay, let's refit the Fritjof. Because I'm not too happy about her performance. The 17.9ers, Mark II, are probably going to make a bit more of a difference. Oh. Four battle cruisers against battleship Scharnhorst and König Wilhelm. Hmm. Okay, fine, we'll do it. I'll refit the Fritjofs after. The Italians are losing ships like crazy. I think this campaign is going to be... Oh, hello. This campaign is going to be potentially even shorter than the last one. Set to full speed. König Wilhelm set to full speed. Ariadne, scout. Destroyer. Uh, I want you to follow... Let's see. I want you to follow. There. Heavy cruiser. No, not avoid, not screen, follow this. Ariadne, go there. Don't avoid. Normal. Why is the Wilhelm leading this div? Is it because they're slightly heavier? Hmm, whatever. And the 18 is one of those newer gunboats. Six double barrels. So she can be quite the nuisance to the enemy. I'm eager to see her just 
do that. What is going on with the sea? This is calm wind and smooth waves. It has a bit of longitudinal weight offset. Maybe that's it. Now, I have the advantage when it comes to vision, so I don't need to push in if I want my ships intact. These battle cruisers, though, had a lot of armor. I suspect we'll not be very capable of dealing damage to them with AP just yet. You've selected AP? Really? I gotta hit them first. No. Oh. Hey, cheap. I'm not too sure about the Koenig Wilhelm. This battle cruiser class did okay previously. They have taken quite a lot of upgrades along with them for this particular war. Oh, they've spotted the battleship and the battle cruiser. Okay. It's just that these casemate guns are. Hmm. For what they do, I'm not too big a fan. Ariadne. Go. Firing range was 4.15. Yeah, so you need a bit more range. Okay, fine. Now, these guys do have a lot more firepower. It's just that I don't expect them to be accurate with said firepower. Good lord, look at these shells. This guy is carrying 2,200 shells. That's the DD, the 18. You can see that. It's not supposed to be happening. Supposed to be here on the side, harassing this battle cruiser. Turning away. They lost sight of the 18, but they can still see something else. What is this div doing? Oh, never mind. It's the CA that I was confused about. They've lost sight of the Koenig Wilhelm. Can they still see Scharnhorst? Probably can. Yes, they can. Go to AP now. They're full on broadside. Perfect opportunity. DD. Not a whole lot of damage yet. Come on, this. There! Right there. Four belt pen, 4,000 damage. That's it. That landed right in the Citadel, considering the amount of damage that that gave them. 6% chance to hit. Nothing yet. San Filippo Lariale. Okay. Eliminate entirely or wait? Hmm. I think she's not a threat. 50% damage and stability. She has absolutely no way to hit me now. Okay, we're going to switch to the Vittoria. What? Was that a DD shot? No, it was the CL. Look at that. That was the Ariadne that did a whole lot of damage. Killing a secondary gun for 790 damage. This guy has 29% damage and stability in Vittoria 14. Okay, focus on the Vittoria, please. 12%, 10%. I'll take these odds. Boom. Flooding. Accidentally hit the Capri. Not supposed to hit the Capri. Oh, look who it is! It's the crossover episode. It's the Regina. It's not my Regina, though. Those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, in the Italian campaign that I did, um, Battlecruiser Regina took on a legendary status after both defending friendly convoys and eliminating enemy convoys. She was a viewer favorite. Uh, she was a favorite of mine. She was a fantastic ship. This is nothing like her. This is absolutely nothing like her. No, my Regina was fast and 
powerful and beautiful, and this is just a joke. Spread the damage around a little. Are you guys circling or something? What's the deal here? Oh, no thanks. Look, if you're coming back for round two, right, then that's on you. Because you're not going to survive. Oh, that was another good hit from the DD. Boom. Parcel pen. Parcel pen. I'm shooting back at the battleship with a half percent chance to hit... Wow. That's terrible, dude. Yeah, that's gonna leave a mark. That was a good pen shot from the 15-inch guns from the König Wilhelm. We'll probably sink the San Filippo. Done. These 15-inch SAP shells, I like them. In the Italian campaign, SAP failed me more often than not. Since that campaign aired, they have adjusted uh, the pen values quite a lot. So you're now seeing some fairly different results with semi-armor piercing. It's a lot more effective. I think you need fairly big guns to make it work. Because the small guns don't really do it justice. But if you get a big gun which has naturally quite a lot of pen, plus you get the um, semi armor piercing, you can get some pretty good mix, if you will, between damage output and pen. Because my chance to pen is good enough to deal with a battle cruiser like this. 13 clicks out, I'm looking at 24 inches of pen. The issue is usually that the angle of ricochet is too high. So... Since the ship is heading directly bow in or directly bow out, so away from me, I can't very well pen it. Because it's extremely angled armor. Semi-armor piercing ignores that. Largely. Thought they did damage to me there for a minute. They haven't. Vittoria's full broadside. Switch to the Vittoria quick. Quick. Here's your opportunity right now. Now. Fire the guns. Thank you. That was what I was looking for. Now that Regina is going to try and make another pass here, I guess. I know I'm closer with these ships than I strictly need to be. It's going to... Expedite the destruction of these ships. What is the Regina's plan here? They're operating s 8 kilometers away. You pen? Somewhat. Angle away. Scharnhorst, 50% chance to hit. 55. Regina is flooding. Pen? Boom. Torpedo detonation. Are you guys still in range? No, should have kept you a lot closer. Poor Regina is probably not going to be here for very long. I kind of think that the Scharnhorst class is missing something. Like it has one funnel, this whole part could do with another funnel. They seem to be fairly effective for what they do. They're very heavily armored for what they do. Yet, this battlecruiser, 110 million, is doing a lot more damage than the Scharnhorst. Probably because Scharnhorst has standard AP shells, which are more likely to bounce relative to the SAP from König Wilhelm. Yeah, you're done for. And then we got the damaged Vittoria and the Capri over there. You're trying to leave, aren't you? 
Boy, have I got a surprise for you. You're going to be met with a destroyer and light cruiser from hell. There goes the Regina. Smoke it up on both. Victoria desperately trying to fight for her survival, but it's not going to really make that much of a difference. Destroyed main tower. Funnel. Engines. Fire control. She's just getting completely ripped apart. Based on stats, I suspect flooding is going to take her first. Unless we... Yeah. Unless we get some massive structural integrity damage hits in. Which we do. You did. Okay. Last ship standing. And the battle cruiser Capri. Damage by the DDs, 1.8. Damage by the CLs, 2.9. Well, I'm not too unhappy about that performance. I mean, they're fighting battle cruisers, which have quite a lot of protection. So yeah, it's it's fair. The Koenig Wilhelm did definitely prove herself. 28,000 damage done. Okay, that's another one. Ship sunk. So that's four battle cruisers down for the count. At this rate, the Italian Navy is going to be done in four more battles. Something to that effect. Because they didn't have that many ships. <laughs> no. Fight to the end. Fight to the end. Oh. Their problems are about to multiply. Because they just pissed off the Austro-Hungarians as well. That means that it's no longer just my 68 ships, which are going after the Italian 30. It's the 142 Austro-Hungarian warships that are going to be joining the fight. So we now have over 200 warships. That means that their warships are outmatched 6 to 1. They do have a lot of battleships left, though. Are they mostly repairing by any chance? Yeah, they're repairing 10 out of their 30 ships. Okay, um, last part of this episode, refit Fritjof. Because the Fritjof could do with some upgrades. The reload was 196 seconds. Um, refit. It is now 184 seconds because we got the Mark IIs, which are also going to be more accurate. And I'm going to give them... I'm not going to give them upgrades. When is my next gun loading system coming out, please? Because I thought I had the auto loaders coming out. Or at least the next step in auto loading. Oh, two months. Make that one month, shall we? Welcome to 1931. Happy New Year. Oh, come on. What? Oh boy, the Italians are getting kicked from every which way. First, I declared war on them. And I essentially just crippled the Italian fleet. Then, the Austro-Hungarians joined the war. And now, the British smell weakness and decide to go to war. Anyway, um, this war against the Italians was a mere three months. And I can now take some ships off of their hands. Like what? Because I'm not... Very impressed with most of their ships. I'd rather have the 150 million. And just be done with it. Because I'm now facing... Oh, that too. <laughs> I'm now facing a minus 291 million deficit. Great. Okay, now I want to refit these ships. And I'm going to have to recall the entire fleet. Put them in dock. And probably... Piss off the English soon-ish. Otherwise, I simply won't be able to afford any of this. Go back. Oh, that battle group hasn't even fought, has it? The one next to Ancona. No, sorry, it has. That was the Fritjof. Yeah, you guys can go back to Limassol. You cannot? Why? See, you can. Any more? Move to Emden, check. 
Yeah. Okay. Let's try this one more time. The Frichov. Refit. Need to get those 17.9 inch guns to fire faster. Refit. This fires in 184 seconds. And this fires in 170 seconds. That's a nice upgrade. Let's get you better engines. I can go for diesels if I so choose to. I don't think it's the best option here. It's going to make these things 296 million. If you go for gear turbines, it's 264 million. So it's not as... Mm, well, it's not as expensive. And right now, I think money is a consideration. What? Oh, that explains a lot. That explains a lot. If I go for diesels, will I be able to make this fit? No. These things didn't have radar. That was their problem. They didn't have radar. No. Um... Take off the radio. There we go. I don't think this thing is going to get out of the way of torpedo anyway. Yeah, no. Okay, 250 million. How expensive was that radio? Not that bad. Okay, um, back up to 28 knots. No. Okay, 27 knots it is. We're going to have to sacrifice some speed to make these guns work better. That's fine. Monetarily, however, it's going to be a problem. I have a lot of expenses right now. Yeah, see, this is going to cost me a lot. Go to point one, reduce the tech budget to 50%. I can last this 10 months. How much do I need to piss off the British? A lot. Why do you like me so much? What the hell? You know, I might have to do something else. I might have to take out the Austro-Hungarians. Because they're going to be too strong. They have too many ships. Their economy is going too well. This is concerning. I think I might have to stab my old ally in the back. But I will be doing that in the next episode. For now, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are. And if you want to support me on Patreon, that would be much appreciated. Thanks for watching. See you soon.